Welcome algebra students to um, our linear graphing refresher. Sorry I couldn't be with you today. Um, period one, I know you guys started this yesterday and I'm going to let you have some time today to finish it. For periods two and three, you are going to be starting this fresh today. So this is just based on kind of what I observed yesterday, um, our need to kind of review lines a little bit. So there's these three forms, point slope form, slope intercept form, and standard form. In the point slope form, you have the y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. The m in that equation is referring to the slope of the line. And the same is true over here in slope intercept form where you see the m, that is referring to the slope of the line. Now sometimes you'll be given that slope, other times you'll just be given two points. And so if you are only given two points, and not given the slope, you'd have to find what the slope is by using this formula here. You would subtract the two y coordinates, subtract the two x coordinates, and divide. Once you get that number, then you could use that up here for your slope. Okay, then in the point slope form, you also have this y1 and x1. So together, those make, the, the, or those come from an ordered pair. So that would be an ordered pair that either you found from the graph of the line or it was given to you. It's basically a specific point on the line. Over here for slope intercept form, this B is also a point on the line, but it's very specifically the Y intercept on the line. So it's the point that crosses the Y axis, so the coordinates would be zero, comma, and then whatever that number is that's in place of B. That's your Y intercept. So both the point slope form and the slope intercept form basically give you a the slope of the line and a point on the line. The point slope form, the point could be anything on the line, whereas in slope intercept form, the point they give you is the y intercept. Standard form doesn't really give you any of that information off, like just from the equation. So usually we don't use standard form to get that information. Usually we're given that information, we write these equations, and then we simplify them into standard form. Okay, and then each of these equations has like a plane x and y, and so those just are the variables. Those are the, the letters in place that are allowed to vary. So in every one of these equations, your x and your y need to remain as x and y. Those are your variables, so that they could be allowed to change. So the same would be true here. and here as well. Okay, so then in this um, little video, I'm just gonna show you how you would find the equation of the line that passes through two points. I'm gonna first use the point slope form, but then I'm gonna simplify it into slope intercept form, and then from there into standard form. So this equation is different than the one on your handout. This equation is using the points 2 comma 5 and negative 1 comma 3. So what I would do is I would first start with a point slope form. That's the y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Now in this example, you were given two points instead of a slope. So we'll have to use this formula here to find the slope of the line. So let's let x1 be 2 and y1 is 5. x2 is negative 1 and y2 is 3. So then the slope would be 3 minus 5 divided by negative 1 minus 2. And so 3 minus 5 would give me negative 2. Negative 1 minus 2 would give me negative 3. So my slope ends up being positive 2 thirds. So I get that slope. That is going to go over here in place of the m. Then I need to plug in one of these points, either 2 comma 5 or negative 1 comma 3. I think maybe I'll choose the 2 comma 5. And it doesn't matter which one you pick, but you do have to pick one. And that can go in place for x1 and y1. So then I would have y minus 5 equals ne or positive. Hold on. y minus 5 equals positive 2 thirds times x minus 2. 
and then we would distribute the two-thirds so that now I can simplify it and get it into slope-intercept form. So right here, when I'm multiplying the two-thirds times two, we can put the two over one, so it just multiply straight across, so it's four over three. And then the last thing I would do is add five to both sides. And since I'm adding a fraction to a whole number, I would need to get a common denominator between four-thirds and five over one. So I would multiply this fraction by three over three, and that would turn it into 15 over three. So then I have y equals two-thirds x, and then it's minus four plus 15, so that would be plus 11 over three. That's the slope-intercept version of the line. And then this was the point-slope version of the line right here. So that's point-slope version. This is slope-intercept version. And then we're going to simplify that and get it into the standard form that we had seen earlier over here. So to get it into standard form, we basically want to get x and y on the same side, and we want a, b, and c to be whole numbers, not fractions. So I will go ahead and move the 2 thirds x to the same side as y. So let's do that over here. So I have y equals 2 thirds x plus 11 thirds. So I would subtract the 2 thirds x. And so I'd have negative 2 thirds x plus y equals 11 over 3. Then what I would want to do is multiply both sides of this equation by 3 over 1 so that I could get rid of the 3's in the denominator. And I need to do whatever I multiply one side, I need to multiply the other. And on this side, I would need to distribute the 3. So everything basically gets multiplied by a 3. So then right here, the 3's would cancel. I'd be left with negative 2x plus 3y equals 11. And then another thing that I should point out with standard form, in fact, maybe I'll write that up here, is that we want to make sure, first of all, a, b, and c have to be whole numbers. And ideally, we'd like A to be positive, which so far it's not in this example down here. So what I will do now is just multiply both sides of the equation by negative 1. And so then the final answer for standard form ends up being positive 2x minus 3y equals negative 11. Oops, that would be our equation in standard form. Okay, so basically when we're writing the equation of a line, we start with the point slope form, this one here, and then we can simplify that easily into slope intercept form if that's what you're being asked to do. And then that can simplify into standard form if that's what you're being asked to do. The other thing you might be asked to do is to sketch the graph of a line. And you might be given like these different equations of the lines. And so there's like different strategies for graphing lines when they're in the different forms. So this is all the same line. So these three graphs are going to come out the exact same. But I just thought I'd show you like the different approaches to graphing them. So maybe with this first graph, we'll look at the point slope form. The y minus 5 equals 2 thirds times x minus 2. So the approach with point slope form is to use the point given. So in this case, you're given the point 2 comma 5. So you would plot that point. You would go over 2 and up 5 and plot that point. Okay, then from there you would do a slope of two-thirds. So you could go up two and over three. Since I'm running out of room, the other option is to go down two and to the left three 
to get more points on your line. And then I could go up two and over three and it would be like somewhere right there. And then you can connect those points and then that would give you the, the graph of the line. So that's how we do point slope. You look at the point, plot the point, and then use the slope from there. The other equation for that same line was in slope intercept form. So earlier I had mentioned that this number, the 11 thirds, that would be your y-intercept. That's your b value. So it might help to write that as a mixed number. So that's 3 and 2 thirds. So when we're in slope intercept form, we start with the y-intercept. So I'd go up 3 and 2 thirds, so it'd be like kind of right there. And then from there, I would do a slope of 2 over 3. So I'd go up 2 and over 3. Or I could go down 2 and to the left 3. So like right there. And then connect, whoops, connect those points. So you can see it's the same line, but it was just a different approach to graphing it. And then the last method is using standard form, the 2x minus 3y equals negative 11. When we have an equation in standard form, usually what we use are the x and y intercepts because they're easy to find in this form. The x intercept you can find by letting um, y be 0. You would plug in 0 for y. So like if I substituted a, y, a 0 in here for y, then this whole thing would go away and it would just be 2x equals negative 11 and I would end up with x equals negative 11 over 2. So I could just plot that point. So that's the same thing as negative 5 and a half. So it would be like over here. You could find the y-intercept by doing something similar. You could plug in 0 for x. So you, then the x part would go away, and you'd be left with negative 3y equals negative 11. And then divide by the negative 3, and y would be 11 thirds, which is the same thing as 3 and 2 thirds. So we could plot that right here, and then connect those points. So as you can see, all three of these ended up graphing the same line, but the approach that we used to get the graph was different. With point slope form, we use the given point and slope. We graph the point, which was 2, 5, and then do the slope from there, which was up 2 and over 3. For the other option, you can start with the y-intercept right here, and which is this number added after the x. And then from there, count the slope up 2 over 3 or down to left 3. And then with standard form, our other option there is to use x and y intercepts. So you plug 0 in for y and solve for x. We got negative 11 halves. That goes on the x-axis. And then plug in 0 for x, solve for y. We got 11 thirds. That went on the y-axis and plot the line. So I hope that this helps you complete the linear refresher worksheet. Um, I'd, like to ha I'd like you to have that by tomorrow. I'll be stamping that along with the um, other review skills worksheet. Thank you. See you then.